Hello and welcome to this Applied Ergonomics Lecture 2. Uh, we were continuing on work systems and some of the basic things we discussed in the last lecture was that what was what is really the definition of a work system, some of the modalities which are involved in such systems including uh, you know work type or work measurement or even uh, work management. We talked about components of a uh, work system and how what are the basic stakeholders involved in defining such a system. We also discussed about how many categories of people uh, are going to be there uh, in a work system and then also what is the need for productivity improvement and definition of productivity which was mapped as really the output upon the input. Okay. And as we already discussed in great details that as there is a burgeoning need imposed by growing population on work systems, it is important that we keep on improving the efficacy or productivity so that you can give more benefits to the people at a lower cost. And uh, that is again uh, the whole purpose of organizing this uh, you know, and putting a systemic approach in studying such processes or such systems. So, let us look at some uh, more fundamental definitions associated with how you gauge uh, productivity. When we talk about productivity on a very, very broad basis, it is really about the output per unit the input. But the output could be in terms of what uh, you know of, of these different components which are associated with the system. One of the very important components is the people component. So, uh, the output of any system um, with respect to what is the sort of input uh, people component in a system could define a very important term which is otherwise known as the labor productivity. In fact, a lot of work management uh, which is involved in studying such systems is detailed about how to uh, improve the task planning through technology or how to improve the, uh, the task uh, layout through uh, let us say simplifying processes and reducing waste or muda uh, as we commonly know from processes. So, that the whole idea is that with minimum number of people we can do most of the work. Okay. And so, therefore, uh, on a parametric basis it is important to monitor what is this term labor productivity which is really uh, the uh, sort of ratio between the work units which are going into producing a product or a service or some other form of uh, value added uh, component which would uh, give uh, which would contribute to the society and that divided by the labor hours uh, which are needed for producing such work units. Okay. So, the way that the productivity really can be improved is to either increase the work unit per unit the labor hour which is there in the system or reduce the labor hour in one work unit of the system and both ways you could sort of get a improvement in the total overall labor productivity. Um, and there is where really the requir requirement of ergonomics comes into picture because if you look at a work and say that it is not being done in a proper manner and you give some other way uh, of doing that work which is uh, spending lesser time or you know spending less effort and still be able to do this work in terms of an aid which could be a technology improvement or something you basically trying to attack the labor productivity and saying that how do you increase it. Okay. So, uh, in, in, in that terms if I wanted to consider uh, what really is responsible for improvement in the uh, labor productivity the labor itself will not be able to contribute really much to improve the productivity because there is only a finite amount of compression that a person can have in terms of the density of work or task that he is performing. Okay. So, beyond that you cannot take that uh, aspect uh, any further because after a while the efficacy of the work delivered if I keep on compressing uh, to an individual and by tasking him more and more that efficacy will come down and that would be at the behest of the quality or the compliance of what is being planned and that is not a good idea. <coughs> so, therefore, it is always important <coughs> that we do consider factors which are away from the labor in order to improve that productivity because of labor. So, then the question becomes that what do you really do if you cannot improve uh, the labor productivity beyond a fixed value. 
And so some of the important, uh, more important factors which you need to address is first example is that can I substitute uh, some of the human effort through machine effort. Okay. So basically, if I substituted machines for human labor, also of course there is a socialistic aspect here that there would be uh, more unemployment and sort of you know uh, that we need of increasing job generation. But you have to look at it from a standpoint of the overall uh, profitability or productivity of a system when you do such uh, decisions of investments. And uh, if supposing otherwise the uh, available money is lying somewhere and not being utilized, it is a better idea to get a utility out of a system without really worrying about the society in general. Obviously, the, the question of job creation in a society becomes a you know a sort of a post production aspect. Okay. And <coughs> if I wanted to consider as a in an engineering domain more uh, issues related to how to improvise by more mechanization, it is going to only improve my uh, productivity from a uh, let us say a profitability or value addition standpoint. And so, I am using this connotation here uh, in this course, particularly being ergonomics course and the social factors like uh, need for employment regeneration etcetera can be separately treated out. So, obviously, so if I do not do or if I am limited by improving productivity of labor, one of the things could be to substitute more and more uh, human labor by machines and the other of course, is technology which is a very important role to play. Uh, obviously, when we talk about information as a component in uh, such work systems, technology as you know has greatly influenced uh, the information flow. And in fact, uh, that is one of the major reasons why today uh, today's systems or today's work systems are much more productive than what it used to be before the information age had really set up. Uh, and uh, today, you know, uh, in lean manufacturing systems, for example, just by a click of a punch or a button, uh, you could get an information to uh, all the way up to the, the vendor end where there is a sub assembly or a part being produced about how much more you need to produce per unit time. So, this is the kind of grading that has happened because of increased speed of information exchange and information technology. Okay. So, technology of course, is a very, very important component which uh, makes a paradigm shift in the way that productivity can be improved. And, uh, Basically, it is a fundamental change in the way some of the activities or functions is accomplished which brings in uh, this higher productivity and technology also could be in terms of again uh, infrastructure. For example, today if I look at an automotive plant, uh, everything related to uh, the uh, way that an automated assembly line goes including the full proofing, the various uh, interlocks which are provided would actually only increase the overall safety level, the quality of uh, the uh, let us say the quality of the work in general or even the overall um, comfort of the concerned worker and technology definitely changes uh, quite a bit of uh, points which are in favor and points which would actually make the place of work much better okay, for uh, the workforce. Uh, uh, and, and that way also some improvement in productivity is, is realized. Okay. So, rather than compressing the labor factor alone, you have to work on technology and capital investments more, so that you could make uh, a much better workplace okay, in terms of uh, efficient task implementation and carrying out things in a timely manner. So, if I wanted to uh, sort of look at capital versus technology. Uh, so, obviously, they cannot be thought of as two discrete pockets, they happen almost with each other. Uh, new technology means new capital investment and vice versa. And so, therefore, the distinctions between capital improvement and technology are often very, very subtle. So, almost always it is that new technologies would require uh, higher capital investments. So, it is really important to recognize that important gains in productivity are more likely to be made by uh, first of all introducing capital and more and more technology in the workplace and then also by attempting to get more work in less time out of the workers. And uh, these are sort of augmenting processes for point number 2 to happen. Uh, 
Also, you have to understand that with technology, there is a marked change in the overall comfort level associated with carrying out a task or an operation. Let me give you an example. Uh, for example, let us say we talk about the coolant feeling uh, of an automotive in a workstation, which is done manually vis a vis uh, a process where coolant feeling is done automatically. And so, there are nowadays machines which are available which you can engage along with the assembly line, and there is a movement of a coolant gun uh, in a carriage which is overhead along with the vehicle uh, up to the extent the coolant filling uh, happens and it is time balanced in a manner so that it is between limited zones and it is confined to one or maybe more than one workstations. But what is really happening here is that if there was a person who was opening the lid every time, checking the vacuuming on the system whether everything is vacuum proof and then trying to fill the coolant along with moving with the vehicle as the assembly line goes on, it is definitely a very hard task and it is also very, very unproductive. Uh, so, at times you are yourself witness to such change when such a machine which does auto vacuuming and auto filling at a pressure is installed, which actually the only purpose now left with the worker is to just engage and disengage the machine. And the machine carries out a task on a timed manner in a manner so that it can do in every vehicle. Okay? And so, uh, this actually is good because now there is no scope of the concerned workforce or workman to uh, somehow meet an accident or let us say get along with the vehicle on the top of the assembly line riding the vehicle from one station to another. And so, therefore, you are, you are putting him in a safe zone at the same time improving his quality of life. Okay? And you could actually enable him to carry out some more tasks, uh, so that uh, his productivity or his value addition to the system could improve and he could remove some of the unsafe practices that he was earlier carrying while he was moving along with the vehicle to do this vacuuming and filling operation himself. So, this is what technology does really you know. So, you have to understand that technology in a way is also important uh, in terms of how to get more work done in less time uh, in different systems like I just said or give an example. So, having said that, uh, it is important now to measure or start measuring productivity and obviously, it is not a very easy task as one can recall, because uh, again productivity uh, is, is dependent on the number of output units. We always know that the output is really not very homogeneous. Okay? Uh, there is also multiple input factors which are involved in a work system. For example, labor capital technology, materials, these are all energy, these are all input factors and their costs do vary in a competitive environment in a particular economic zone with certain forces. Okay? So, from time to time, place to place, there is obviously a marked uh, difference in the way that input factors are costed. And uh, therefore, um, and with this along with coupled with the fact that the product mix also changes based on the demand of the market. Today, the customer may want to have a certain line of product tomorrow you may just make it obsolete and try for doing something else okay? or some other market may prop up in some other part of the world which wants the old product. So, therefore, the product mix also keeps on changing and therefore, because of this dynamism associated with the work system, it is very hard to measure productivity, but still there are certain gauges and matrices which are used to do that and probably in the next lecture, I will cover how to measure the productivity and move ahead with things like productivity index etcetera, which do from a year to year uh, make uh, you know the production system uh, towards more efficiency. Thank you very much.